All right, so this is another video talking about uh, functions in regards to uh, the intervals of increasing, decreasing, positive, negative, uh, as well as relative minimums and maximums. I did a longer explanation video, uh, so I hope you click on that. I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to go through very quickly number 10, just to uh, help you guys out with relative minimums and maximums, as well as all the other things. So, First thing, part A says intercepts. So intercept right here at negative 4 comma 0. Uh, intercept the y-intercept is here at 0 comma 3. Another intercept right here at 4 comma 0. And another one here at 8 comma 0, as well as 10 comma 0. So those are all my intercepts. Again, the places where it crosses the x and y axis. All right, uh, so now let's go ahead and continue to increasing and decreasing. Okay, let's start with increasing intervals. I'll start it up here because I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of things we need to know. Okay, so the graph is increasing right here at this point. Okay, and then of course at that point up at the top, then it starts to go down. So I want just this portion right here. So it's increasing starting at negative 4. Actually, let's bring that back. I lied. There we go. So it starts increasing at negative 4. And we can include that point. And it stops increasing at 0. Remember, it's not the y value. It's the x value. So I know that there's a point at 3, and it says 3, and it's so tempted to the right 3. But it's actually at the x value of 0. And we can include that point. So it's increasing from negative 4 to 0. Okay. And the next point where it starts increasing is right here to right here. So the graph is increasing at that interval. Okay. So it looks like it starts increasing at 6, the x value right there. So again, if I drew a dotted line, there we go. And it goes to increase until 9. And we can include those points and put a union because there's two different spots. So it's increasing on those two intervals on this graph. All right, let's talk about decreasing now. So the graph is decreasing. Let's highlight a section right here. So this is a turning point right here, and it starts going down, 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 until it gets to there, then it turns again. But remember, that's 0. So this is at the x value or the domain value of 0, and goes all the way until 6 and we can include both those numbers. So from 0 to 6, the graph is going down. And then there's another little section here where it goes down at those two points right there at 9, and it stops at 10, and we can include those numbers. And again, there's two different intervals, so we'll put a union to unify them together. And those are the two spots or the two intervals where the uh, function is decreasing. Okay, so that takes care of increasing and decreasing. Let's worry about positive and negative now. So I'll draw a nice line here. Okay. And remember, everything above the line is positive. Everything below the line is negative. All right, let's do positive first. So the graph is positive from here all the way to here. Those are all positive parts. Okay. So it starts being positive at negative 4. And, it's, and it stops being positive at 4. Now, here's the important part about positive negative. So notice that these are where the x-intercepts are at negative 4 and positive 4. And where the x-intercepts are, the function equals 0. And remember, the function at 0 is not positive or negative. 0 is a neutral number. So make sure you remember we don't include or we're not inclusive of negative 4 and 4 because those are x-intercepts. Okay? So that's where it's positive. And then there's another little section right here from 8 to 10 where it's positive. Okay, so from 8 to 10. And remember, we just talked about it. If it's an x-intercept, it's at 0, meaning it's not positive or negative, so we need to put parentheses around it. So 8 to 10 is the positive interval. All right, let's now do negative interval. So the only negative part of this graph, again, let's go ahead and make a line there on the x-axis is right here, this little section. Okay, so it appears to start at 4, so the negative part starts at 4, and goes to 8, 
And remember that it's on the x-axis, meaning y is zero at that point. So zero is neither positive or negative, so I need to put non-inclusive parentheses there. So that's the negative interval, four to eight. All right, now let's talk about relative minimums and maximums. So at this particular juncture, uh, we want to look for places where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So right here, because you see where the graph was increasing, then decreasing. All right, here's another point because it was decreasing and then it increased. And then a third one, even though there's no dot there, it was increasing and then started decreasing. So those are three different points where I'm going to have relative minimums or maximums. It's the point of which, it's kind of like the tipping point. It's like the hill or the bottom of the valley, per se. And so we have to decide whether they're minimums or maximums. So this one right here at the very top, I just circled it, that's going to be a maximum because it's the tallest point around that part of the graph. So relative max, so I just put R max. Okay, down here, that's going to be a relative minimum because it is down below. It's the lowest part of the graph at that particular part of the graph. And then this point right here is a relative maximum because it is at, around, uh, at that particular part of the graph. It's the tallest part of the graph or at the highest part of the graph. And then for completeness, let's go ahead and label those points. So this is at 0, 3. Uh, this one down here is at 6, negative 2. And then this one up here is at 9, 1. So those are my relative minimums and maximums.